Possibly two of the biggest questions in the world that still need answering are, are we alone in this universe? And if not, has alien life ever visited planet Earth? The answer to both those questions is yes, no, and maybe, depending on who you ask. However, there are many things each and every one takes into consideration when thinking about such questions. The main one being other people's experiences and research. But the trouble is, a lot of the information out there is usually hyped up and tainted. And with all the false UFO sightings and supposed aliens caught on camera videos around, it can be hard to find some of the more convincing stories out there. Now, I am by no means saying aliens exist and have visited us, but after searching around, I have found five of some of the most interesting stories and pieces of evidence to suggest that maybe another life form has visited this planet. Now, because the reports include UFOs, which are simply unexplained objects not necessary of alien origin, I'm simply going to leave it up to you to decide. So, from a very strange ranch in Utah that seems to be a hotspot for UFOs, to stories told by one of the most experienced astronauts on the planet. Here are five sightings and reports involving mysterious crafts and encounters with supposed extraterrestrials. Sit back, open your mind, and enjoy the video. The Turan Incident On the 18th of September 1976, one of the strangest aviation and unidentified craft encounters in history took place. It all transpired when citizens of Tehran began sighting strange lights in the sky. At the time, tension was high with the United States, so the thought of it being an attack on their home country was the first thing people thought of. However, as time passed, they realized this was not the case and something else was floating around. As word got around, the Assistant Deputy Commander of Operations, General Yousefi, became aware of the sightings and phoned the nearest international airport to check if anything was flying in the area that could be mistaken for a UFO but no commercial airlines were in the airspace. After checking the skies himself to make sure the people were not seeing a star, he saw the UFO with his own eyes and made the order to scramble an F-4 Phantom fighter jet to prowl the area, piloted by Captain Mohammed Reza Azikani. As Mohammed got within 25 nautical miles of the object, something very strange happened. Not only was he able to confirm it was a definitive UFO, but all of his fighter jet instruments began to malfunction. He had no choice but to head back to base, and as he did so, his instruments began working again. Unsure if his aircraft was perhaps having an unusual fault, a second jet was sent up, piloted by Lieutenant Parviz Jafari. As he approached the craft, he reported it as being the size of a commercial airliner. Then a small object ejected from the side of it and approached Parviz's plane. Under the impression it was a threat, he attempted to fire a missile at the smaller object, but much like Mohammed's plane, all of his instruments were not functioning including his ejector seat button, which he tried to press as the craft approached a dangerous distance to him. He somehow managed to turn the jet around and head back to the base, but the smaller, unidentified craft was close behind for most of the way. Jafari then witnessed it plummet to Earth and softly land on the ground on the outskirts of Iran. A military search was conducted the following morning, but nothing was found. The 1976 Tehran incident is one of the most interesting cases out there, and although some say it could have perhaps been a case of ball lighting, that also caused fighter jet technical faults due to high levels of electromagnetic interference. This was incredibly unlikely and was never brought up when the event details were sent to the US Defense Intelligence Agency, the NSA, CIA, and even the White House, none of which came up with a valid explanation for what happened that day. It's a personal favor of mine when astronauts claim to have seen UFOs or things they cannot explain in regard to possible extraterrestrials. And one of the best encounters of this is from Colonel Gordon Cooper because this man is the real deal. During his time, he was an Air Force pilot, aerospace engineer, took part in the first manned space program in the United States, piloted the Mercury space flight, was the first American to sleep in space, and was the last American to conduct a solo orbital space flight. So when someone with that much education and experience under their belt talks about UFOs, you can't help but listen. Gordon's first encounter was in 1951, when he along with his co-pilot saw a formation of UFOs very high in the sky, whilst flying an aeroplane over Germany. He sent an emergency flight report to the government, but the response was that they were most likely high-flying sea pods. After this, he continued to see them on a regular basis, whilst piloting fighter jets in the area. Then, a few years later, Gordon was involved in another sighting while supervising flight testing at the Edwards Air Force Base. 
when a saucer landed in a dry lake bed and a military camera crew filmed it before it flew off. Gordon, who was nearby but did not see the craft himself, was quickly informed and requested the film be developed as he was making calls to report the sighting, which was of high importance to the military. After all, a craft had breached their privacy by entering the base and airspace uninvited. When the footage was developed later that day, Gordon held the film up to the window and was able to see the processed photo of the craft before the film was sent to Washington base and never seen again. Gordon is confident neither the US, Russia or any other countries had a similar craft to what was saw at the base and believes it was an advanced ship from outer space. He has also stated that many of his high profile friends from pilots to astronauts all agree and all have their own UFO stories. Up until his death, Colonel Gordon Cooper maintains that the US government was covering up information about UFOs and the backlog of hiding this information from the public would be too embarrassing for them ever to reveal, so it's easier for them to deny it all entirely. O'Hare International Airport On November the 7th, 2006, a dozen or so people witnessed a shiny disc-shaped object hovering above United Airlines Gate C-17 at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. It all began when an airport worker spotted it floating and spinning around 1300 feet above him, and it wasn't long before word got around on people's radios and the sighting was then backed up by many more, including pilots. It was witnessed hovering for around two minutes before it blasted straight up, punching a hole in the cloud it passed through. As the sighting hit the news, the Federal Aviation Administration were quick to address the concerns by stating it was a weather phenomenon and United Airlines denied any knowledge despite their employees reporting it. They later changed their statement to say that they had no authority to investigate themselves and were not going to take it further. The National Aviation Report Center then issued a report stating that any object in the skies that day, if United States or any other country's property, should have been reported as it could have caused major problems for their airport's flight plans. The Federal Aviation Administration were ordered to conduct an internal review of air traffic communications for that day and found a call made by an airport worker to the FFA regarding the sighting which confirms it did happen. Despite this, however, as far as we are aware, no more research or investigations were carried out and the object witnessed by many flying over O'Hare Airport is still unexplained. The Skinwalker Ranch This one is a little different, but I'm sure you're going to like it. It's not a single UFO or supposed alien encounter, but a handful that took place at a ranch. Not the Stardust Ranch that I did a documentary on, but a place called Skinwalker. The property is located in Utah and is a 480 acre ranch that for many years has been known for its UFO activity and cattle mutilations after it was purchased by the Sherman family in 1974. During their time there, they said they had many unidentified animal sightings and also paranormal activity in the home, but I'll just focus on the UFO and supposed alien encounters. For starters, the family's cattle would apparently be dragged away by alien-like beings and strange mechanical noises could be heard from beneath the ranch. There was also an abundance of indentations in the land as if something large had landed, along with formations in the grass similar to crop circles. It wasn't until 1995 that the family started noticing crafts and unusual lights in the sky, vehicles rising from the ground and various types of flying spheres they could not explain. Then one evening, Mr. Sherman was out with his three dogs when he noticed a blue orb which he and his dogs followed into a nearby field of thick bushes. He apparently lost track of his dogs and then heard three yelps. Unable to find them, he returned the next day in the light and found what he said was three greasy spots with a fat lump in the middle. He can only assume they had been incinerated somehow. This was apparently the final straw and the family, who by now all slept in the same room through fear of what might happen in the night, decided to move out. During their stay, they had lost 14 animals at the hands of what they say were alien-like creatures and UFOs. So what happened after they moved out? Well, the Shermans accepted an offer from millionaire Robert T. Bigelow, founding member of the National Institute for Discovery Science a research organization with a long-standing interest in paranormal topics. He moved his research team in and 24-hour observation was set up. For over six years, there was a blackout on the release of information, but it was later said that they had difficulty obtaining evidence consistent with scientific publication. The National Institute for Discovery Science stopped operating in 2004, and although they did not find anything whilst researching the property, the company has had a lot of bash for their poor research in previous investigations. 
So the experiences the Schumann family had during their stay there will forever leave us wondering if they were making things up or were telling the truth and the Skinwalker Ranch is home to things we cannot explain. What do you think? On November the 17th, 1986, the three crew members of a cargo plane filled with wine that was flying from Paris to Tokyo spotted three mysterious objects in the sky as they flew over Eastern Alaska. On board was the co-pilot, flight engineer, and highly experienced pilot, Captain Kenju Teriyochi, who all saw something unusual on their radar just after sunset, which could not be confirmed by the ground crew. Just a few moments later, they report back to air control to confirm there was definitely something in the air, but the ground crew confirmed no plane was in the vicinity, but told them if they could see something to keep their distance. As the craft came dangerously close to the plane's front window, the crew managed to get a clearer look at them, later describing them as looking like white shelled walnuts that were twice the size of their aircraft. They started to get concerned for their safety, so requested a new flight path to get away from this UFO. They were told to make a 360 turn, and as they got back on track, they could no longer spot it. At this point, the nearby Almondorf Air Force Base in Alaska got involved as they could see an unidentified object on their radar that was directly behind the cargo plane. The pilots were asked if they wanted military intervention, but they declined and landed safely in Anchorage before heading to Tokyo and filing an official FAA report on an unidentified craft sighting. It wasn't long before their story got out and many people wanted to speak with Captain Teriyuchi about his experience, but his airliner didn't want this to happen and he was discredited by them, even being demoted his role as pilot if he was to speak out and was only able to fly again many years later. The CIA apparently confiscated the official report and the military radar sightings of the object was reported as nothing more than a malfunction that was showing up a duplicate of the cargo plane and could not be used as hard evidence. The story quickly faded from the news and was no longer talked about. But one member of the FAA, John Callaham, did not want this story to go into cover and fought to give it the research and attention he said it deserved, confirming the CIA did tell the FAA not to speak of the event. But despite John's efforts, nothing more came about it. A few weeks later, a military aircraft reported a similar object during its flight over the exact same area. However, despite this, the original sighting, along with this sighting, received little publicity apart from the initial release, and an official explanation has never been given. So that's five very interesting stories and encounters involving UFOs and possible extraterrestrial beings. I hope you enjoyed, and don't forget, I am narrating articles over at the Top 5's website for you to enjoy and further your knowledge on subjects similar to my videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll either see you over on the site, or I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.